Okay, my friends, hold on to your hats. First ever images, first ever images of atoms turning into quantum waves. Kind of mind-blowing. This is what the first ever image is. Let me show you what the real first ever, ever image is we took 10 years ago. Okay, my friends, I have been doing research in physics since 1970, and my theory is dipole electron flood theory, and everything can be reduced to dipole electrons, and dipole electrons in mass turn into atoms and atoms in mass turn into molecules, and molecules in mass turn into matter. They're talking about stunning image shows atoms transforming into quantum waves, just as Schrodinger predicted. Well, quantum waves are, is the particle wave duality, but they're talking about atoms. I'm talking about light, which is way smaller than, than an atom. Okay, this is Anton Petrov. He's usually pretty interesting, but I'm very, very disappointed lately. He's been just spouting off really literally nonsense from academia and then posting it here and getting a whole batch of hits. He got 1.3 million subscribers. And just in the last two days, he's got 235,000 hits on this. It's just total nonsense. And if he won't talk to me, he's just lost in space, just like the rest of them. I thought he was really a legitimate guy, but I've lost faith. This is real science. This is light. All right, this is a, a, just light. It's a photon of light, and it is accelerating, and we can actually see the particle being pulled out of the wave. There's your wave-particle duality. Case closed. This is very, very simple. This is light coming through the air, just light being accelerated. The reason we can see this is it's a pulsed red laser from just a simple construction laser. Bip, 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 and it's starting to accelerate. That's the only reason we would see it. There's other ones over here, there's some over here, it's exactly the same as this, only we don't see them because they're not being forced into these particles in front of them. And here's what it looks like as it starts to speed up. Here it is right there. Now it's really taken off. Now we're looking at it as it approaches the Venturi, which is the accelerator. You see this, and this, and this, and this? Those are all coming through the air at the same time, along with this one. They don't interact with anything because they're just, they're not being accelerated. Here they show up because they're being pushed back at. This, if you look here carefully, you can see quite clearly, this is a reverse EMF. This is literally an explosion going like this, and it's pushing back against these waves. That's the only reason you see them. This one we see because it's being pulled forward because of the acceleration. This is true science. Okay, this goes back to 2013, and this is Fermi Lab, and these are the smallest particles I can find. They call them Dirac neutrinos, the black and the glowy one. This is a fixed particle, never changes size, has a glowy edge, and this is the one that's a point particle, has no mass to it whatsoever. Shown this hundreds and hundreds of times. I contacted Fermi Lab, Don Lincoln, the guy who wrote this paper back, oh, I don't know, it was maybe 2014 or so, because we were finding the same particles, as I'll show you in a second. Well, as a matter of fact, here they are right here. Well, those are the neutrinos, and this is what they found. The neutrino is one of the most mysterious particles in the standard model. The original idea of neutrinos was formulated in response to a problem in beta decay, well, of the standard model. Standard model doesn't work, that's why. But here is Don's particles, Don Lincoln, and I communicated with him. We didn't get along that well, and uh, this is Fermi Lab. It did do exactly what I said they do, and what he says they do. The black one with the glowy edge around it, see? It? it never changes. It's just one big ball. This is the same as this, only this is colorized, and you know, showing the energy potentials. And they grow as it comes through the air this way, and bangs into all the particles in front of it. The one that lags diminishes, and then this one gets real pumped up, and brrr, they flip. That's called a muon wobble. I showed all that stuff to them. Even this here, the muons, here's, here's their picture, muon neutrino, electron neutrino. 
Electron neutrino is the white one turns into showers. The muon neutrino is the black one that stays the black ball. It calls a sterile muon. And I show this very, very, very clearly. Here's the particles coming down. This is the neutrino phase before they get fully pumped up. And here's the photons. And right there, they split. The black splits from the white. That's called fission. It comes right back together, and that's fusion. And here's the wave trying to plowing through all of this debris and the particle is in the midst of the wave and now we're pulling it forward out of the wave because it's accelerated so we can actually see that particle and right here it takes on its complete full photon phase up to here it's just gr growing in energy but here it's compressing against itself as it pushes back so here it pops up into a photon you see don't get the photon and that little actually bounces from something and then you see it and this is what they see here. See the same thing. They see the photons. They smash their particles back together. And this gives you the ability for a neutron to drop down to be a proton. All it has to do is lose one of these little tiny particles. And it drops down to be a proton. Because instead of having 1824, it ends up with 1823. The dipole electron flood theory literally solves everything in physics on the subatomic level. But none of the stuff that they're talking about is true. Alright, this is, he's saying that this is, uh, well, he's right about these. He's right, exactly right. This is Don Lincoln. They have a fixed size, the black ones. They have a fuzzy edge, yes. Uh, the other ones are, are field effects. They have no mass to them at all. But then he goes on here to say in the quantum foam, which is, and he's right about this too. Empty space isn't empty. <laughs> There's nothing empty about that at all. The particles I just showed you of light, they come from the sun, they're everywhere. They come from every luminous source. They completely saturate the universe. And we just plow through them. That's what the, that's what the whole thing's all about, quantum foam. And he's right about this too. They don't show up. It says empty space isn't empty. It's just the dizzying display of turning on and off because as the particles get hit by other particles, they blink, 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 blink. It's exactly what it says. It says particles winking in and out of existence. These particles, subatomic particles, are real and have a measurable impact on our universe. Yes, because as light comes through it, it slows down. That means we have no idea where we are in space because we judge everything on the speed of light not changing. And that is, again, proven right here. Here's the speed of light changing. Fast, slowing down. <laughs> that's, that's changing, my friend. And we can speed it up. Here it's coming kind of slow and zip, takes off. This is up or down, no problem. And I corresponded with Don back, I think it was 2014, 2015. We went back quite a bit and uh, it didn't work out. And they absolutely refused to even think about this. And this is exactly the particles they're trying to find. These are the particles they've been looking for forever. This is the problem with physics. It's, it's really not want to be understood. It's much more profitable to have a um, complete mystery. <laughs> All right, they're getting closer and closer. I just something just came in about gluons. Now this is my model, which is electron flood theory, dipoles. Gluons are the two smallest particles there are, which consists of an electron and a muon. That's what a gluon is. And 1823 of those makes a proton. 1824 makes a neutron because it's neutral. It doesn't want to give one up. It doesn't want to take one on. When they're uneven numbers, they're charged. Whether they want to accept one or give one up, that's up to them. Photons are just two of these back to back, as I showed you. Very, very simple. Everything I showed you is extremely simple and obvious and seen. So these gluons are a big deal to them. Now there's going to be some changes in science. Chemistry is going to change a little bit. Space and distance and time is way off. Space is, they have no idea what they're doing. It's not a vacuum and all that stuff. The red shift is not a shift because it's being stretched out. It's just slowing down. And this is, like I said, this is my theory. It goes back years and years and years ago. And um, this is what the actual proton looks like. All of the outside particles are the glowy ones. 
They could separate. I never. This is what really threw me for a loop. I always thought a bar magnet, you couldn't break the, the positive from the negative. And you cannot until you get down to where that's all you got left is one positive and one negative. And that's this. When you smash this, some go as positives and some go as negatives. And that's what the anatomy of the proton is. It's not one big ball like this with a few quarks in there. And when you smash it, it makes a bunch of debris. All right, this is what they show is this. They smash them together, they get all this kind of debris, yes. But all they are is little bits and pieces of these different bits and pieces of these same particles. And if for some reason, at a certain quantity, which is about 1824, they, they vibrate and then they lock in. It's called like a resonance frequency. And you can do that on salt table experiments where they go and they just lock in absolutely flawless pattern. And I believe this does the same thing. And it's strictly because of positive to negative push to shove. Shown it very, very clearly that these are these particles. Those are two, two die balls back to back. This here, these aren't fully fledged photons. This is a, a neutrino. Uh, um, these are, um, yeah, they change flavors as they go along, neutrinos. This is one style, this is another style, these are the photons. And the neutrinos just get more and more energy as they come forward. And as soon as they bang off the surface, then you see them as the full photons. All right, this is more nonsense from the physics mainstream. Physicists detect hints of a mysterious particle called a glue ball. <laughs> and they're supposed to bind subatomic gluon particles. Well, here's what they say about them. It's that individual gluons don't contain any matter. That is incorrect. They just carry force. They do carry force and they carry matter. Glue balls, which don't exist, do have mass created by the interactions of gluons. Well, if the gluons don't have any mass, how come the interactions ends up with having mass? It's just crazy. If we can spot them, which I have, it's another indication our current understanding of the way the universe works, also known as the standard model of particle physics, is indeed correct. It's not right at all. It's totally wrong. It's totally wrong. Standard model does not work whatsoever. And I have shown this over and over and over, and I will discuss this with Fermilab or any of them. The standard model it just does not work when you get down to the subatomic level. These are the only two particles that exist. There's a black one and a white one. The two of them together make a gluon. So that gluon is a black and a white. Two gluons back to back make a photon. All the rest of this stuff, which they consider to be particles, they're not really particles, they're just variations of these. And they see them when they smash these particles to bits in their big colliders. We're using a single tiny little bit of light. We're using light, which this all ends up being is light. When you get down to it, it's just a flash of light. You know, I don't want to get this too confusing, but I'm just going to tell you right now. Light spins in a circle, just like this. And that's a single slit. And coming through, it separates because the white particles are the only ones to get through, and they push each other apart. So it's not a double slit experiment is not correct. There's no flapping and so forth. It's just a particle spinning. Light can slow down. That's fast and coming down, slowing down. Light can speed up, quite obviously. Light is a particle, quite obviously. It comes from a wave, quite obviously. The wave is pushing all the particles in front of it that have their own fields, and they begin to glow because this is pushing them. And every time you push and shove one to the other, you get a glow. The more the intense push, the more they glow. There's nothing here that's not obvious. And these are the particles they've seen, they just don't know where they come from, the most mysterious of all. And this goes back to 2012. 2012, 2013, 2014 was when Don Lincoln was talking all about these and the muon experiments and all this. And I said, hey, we found your particles. And we did. 
And that became a no-show. They, they, they don't want to know about it. Don't, 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 call, don't get a hold of us anymore. We're going to block you. I don't want to ever have anything to do with you. That's basically what they told me. And I said, well, wh wh why can't you look at this? So anyway, I went to the University of Geneva um, for particle physics, and they did look at this, and they did listen. And then they did actually use CMOS and upgrade CERN to use CMOS, which is what we were using. They said, you can't use CMOS. I said, yes, we can. We're, we're looking at particles of light. They said, it won't matter. You're going to smash the CMOS because they're too energetic. I said, no. Particles of light are not too energetic. You're using this, and they're hitting the, their CMOS with that. They would destroy it, yes. So they upgraded to a very high, you know, a, a strong CMOS, to, some kind of filter something out of it, so that they, all they got was a light in the back. And then they could watch and see all these things just like us. They could see this. Before, they couldn't see that. They were using uh, some other type of device that was, it would cause what they call the um, observer effect. They sample some of the stuff out of it, and they change everything about it. So then they look at it and they say, if you're looking at it, it changes. No, it doesn't. If you're sampling it, it changes. This here, we don't sample anything. We just sit back and let it smack into our CMOS. For them, though, they, they couldn't do that because the chunks that they were throwing off were huge. We're throwing off single one of these at a time, and, and the CMOS can handle that. It can't handle getting smacked with something like that. And that's their problems, not ours. You see this? This is what they did, CMOS Detector Systems Development. This was a huge upgrade, big upgrade, major upgrade to use CMOS. And this is, there's all kinds of things about this. Developing a CMOS, high voltage, just a proper rate of performance, measuring, looking forward to the 2030s. <laughs> oh, man. High luminosity news, optimization of the CMOS front end circuit, CMOS sensor developments. And there's one way back in 2014, they were looking from, they, they, trying to think of how they were going to do it. The CMOS, high voltage CMOS detectors investigated for upgrades. That was 2013. CERN sub detectors built on the show and so forth. I mean, it's all about this CMOS upgrade. And without it, they can't see the stuff. I just showed you the stuff we could see with CMOS only using a cell phone. This is just using a cell phone. And it, this particular cell phone was the Samsung Galaxy S3. And we used the selfie side. Right up front. And I mean, you can see the results are just staggeringly, phenomenally fabulous. You can see it's a wave. It's just beginning to accelerate. And here's full acceleration, and here's the photon right here. And the photon looks precisely like that. Now CERN and the Fermilab, they could see the particles. They just didn't know they were detected. They were all in piece of one photon. So they still have everything wrong. All right, so that's it for today. Thank you. Have a sterling day. I'd love to have somebody contact me from the physics universe that is really interested in in understanding this. I have a lot to offer here. I'm not just spouting off. I have physical material evidence. You know, I'm just going to close it up here. It is very, very frustrating to have all this evidence and be ignored and demeaned by the people that we trusted to teach us. And by the way, this is what space looks like in a magnetic field type of way. Everything creates fields around it as they spin through space. The moon does not because it doesn't spin. You have to spin. It is moving, though, this way because the blue shift is here. We talk about red shift where the light is being pulled away from the Earth. That's not happening whatsoever. Light is just slowing down. We are completely lost, and nobody wants to get found. All right? Last word. Thank you. I love you all. Happy Mother's Day.